Hey everyone, it's finally time for the Maximus 10 formula review. <laughs> So we'll whiz through what you get in the box just quickly because at the end of the day, it's quite an expensive board, so you want to know. So this is your massive sticker pack. There's loads of stuff going on there, cable um, identifying stickers and all kinds of other stick that, stuff that you could stick all over your bedroom or if you wanted to be annoying over your mum and dad's bedroom on the front of the TV, you know what I mean, do whatever you like. Coaster, driver CD, I still wish it was a USB, but you do get another little badge inside there. And then a cable mod voucher. So if anyone's looking to buy some cable mod stuff, I'm gonna let you use this voucher and it can only be used once. If you do use it, I'd love you to tell me about it on the OC3D forums or Twitter or something though. So there's your voucher. And then in the manual, you do get a funky uh, badge. I think that might have ended up going down here. I can't remember. Cause I've, I just had to film this again, there we go. So you do end up getting a funky badge that you could put somewhere tasteful on your PC. You do get a, an addressable and uh, a non-addressable uh, RGB extension, and I will talk to you about those in a second. Other stuff that you get is six SATA CDs. You get a, a USB 3 internal to USB 2 internal. So what it does is it, you plug it into that and it gives you basically one of those headers. Now I was looking around and I, I did find that kind of weird because I thought that we would have had two USB 3s, but there's not, there's only one. So you do get, yeah, an extra one. Oh, it's, it's, it's a strange one because I, th I think I'd probably end up using the USB 3 for my case. Um, but anyway, you get a wireless dongle that you screw in, it's magnetic. Um, not your screw, well you screw it into the back where the headers are. So you've got that, I've taken them out loads of times. Uh, SLI bridge. Uh, this is the vertical mount for one of the M.2s because there is a couple. So there's a fair bit of stuff for you to uh, play with there. Okay then peeps, so a good look around the board itself before we uh, show you all the lights and all the mumbo jumbo. Now, first and foremost, around the back there are thankfully a lot of connections because some of the other Asus boards in the Coffee Lake lineup have been somewhat lacking. But we do still get a HDMI and a display port if you're one of the crazy people that buy this board and end up using the onboard video, maybe for emergencies or something like that. But I think I'd rather have a spare 10 pound graphics card hidden somewhere and another line of extra, you know, goodness around the back. Um, you've got your, audio, you know, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi around the back, the BIOS switches, um, so the BIOS flash and the CMOS clear. USB 2s, USB 3s, USB um, 3.1 Gen 2, Gigabit Ethernet, audio. These all light up nice inside as well. It's all the normal stuff, but it's the backplate pre-fitted. That's kind of cool. Now we've got the, um, the IO cover around the back and the big shield all over. It's all joined up underneath that. You do get massive heat sinks but they're also water blocks. Now, a lot of people do kind of say to me about them, oh, are they all copper and they're aluminium uh, and then there's copper inserts inside. Now, a lot of people then start going nuts about galvanic corrosion. Well, you can calm your boots because it's anodized and it's been done properly. You don't have any fears with uh, galvanic corrosion. And let's face it, when EK make it, you know it's been done properly anyway. So you've got loads of power phases around the CPU. You do get a start and a reset up the top here and then um, your boot LEDs, because you do get a, a PCI poster, but obviously you get the LEDs so you know what's going on as well. And they're actually hidden down the side in here, but that, that's kind of cool. They're well spaced out as well. You only really need to look at them once, write them down and then you'll know what the LEDs mean. USB 3 SATA, you've got the water cooling section down here. So you've got the water flow, you've got temperature in and out as well. There's a, um, you've got like the normal, uh, a normal fan header there. Um, this is an M.2. Now I know a lot of people don't like it because it will sit vertically and there is a bracket that you screw in to do it, but it means that you can get one of the 110 millimeter long M.2s in there if you want. Obviously you don't have to use it, but to be honest with you, I don't, you know, I actually use the vertical on my X99 Deluxe 2. Uh, there is another M.2 hidden underneath here, which goes on with the heat sink, because um, this is, you know, a solid chunk of aluminium. 
This does still light up though, which is kind of cool. And this is an OLED panel, which I'll show you in a bit as, anyway. Um, then you've got four um, RGB connections down the bottom. You've got two of the addressable ones and two of the normal plain four pin ones. Don't get them confused. It'd be an amazing amount of people I've had um, uh, sending me messages going, oh, it's got a pin missing, it's broke. And it's like, no, that's the addressable ones. You can also see there your retry button, your safe boot button and the memo OK button. Fan, I'm trying to look myself, but I'm looking in the camera at the same time. Water pump, fan, high amp fan. So this is for big power drain fans. CPU and CPU optional. Down here we've got another fan and then the AIO. The AIO is it will be, if you plug the fan in that, um, it will just run at 100% by the way, until you go and set it up in the BIOS. So yeah, there's that really. Oh, around the back, massive back plate. Um, it can be difficult to get in some cases. It can be a bit hit and miss. Um, and I know that's like, oh, that's a lot of help, Tom, but it's, it's so kind of, you never exactly know. But if you've got a decent case, you won't have an issue. I think that's rather cool. But anyway, so it does have an OLED panel in the middle of the board. And this is just a really easy way for me to be able to show you the uh, lights. Now I've got a special cable, um, which allows me to power the board up. <laughs> Uh, without even being built. Uh, but anyway, so you get your two RGBs here, you get RGBs up the top, the two switches up in the top hand corner are now not white or red anymore, they're just RGB as well, which is all nice, and then you get a little bit behind the heatsink. Any of the other lights that you would want to do, add in RGB fans, all of that sort of stuff, around the case you'd have to use the headers. Uh, and to be honest with you, I think a slightly more understated board can kind of lean into uh, favouring that. Let's face it, if you had some RGB memory on here and your graphics card was all RGB or a synced up, then it might get a little bit, you know, that's going to be about all right. But if the whole board was covered in RGBs, it might be a little too much. So, but anyway, you can make your own mind up. I definitely, clearly, obviously think that is pretty awesome. Okay then, peeps. So if you're wondering why the case is still out, basically I made a little bit of a boo-boo and I'd got everything done, got all the um, uh, testing and everything done. And then I realized that I deleted the pictures for the um, motherboard and I was like, ah! So the case is actually here. It's literally been this mass rush to get it all out so that I could uh, take pictures for it so I can actually get like the stuff for the website done as well. But anyway, so I've got my magic cable so that I can show you it. Uh, lit up anyway. So performance wise, um, if you were to put it up against the Apex at stock, the Apex just pulls in front. Um, I think that's probably going to be maybe something that will get addressed with a BIOS revision. It's not a massive difference anyway. Um, also, this has been, uh, has had a shorter time with it being on the market. So this is a lot newer. When I tested the Apex, the Apex had been out like three or four I think I'd had it like three weeks or something, maybe even four weeks, I can't remember, three weeks at least. So I'd had the Apex a little bit longer and there was an extra BIOS revision on it. So I would have thought within the next month or so they will be level pegging and it's just kind of the finer details that they do need to sort out. As far as the overclocking and stuff was concerned though, we did manage to hit five gigahertz easy at 1.3 volts. And uh, I also got 4,000 megahertz memory running as well. We were starting to get to the kind of crest of the wave with that though. And I would still say with all of the Coffee Lake boards that 3200 is spot on, 3600 if you want to push the envelope a little bit. To be honest with you, the kind of 32, 36 would be the points that even I would kind of, they would be the, the speeds that even I would buy. So, but it will do 4,000, but you're gonna be spending a lot of money for not a massive amount of return. That's not the board's fault, it's just the way it is, especially if you're just gonna XMP. If you're just gonna XMP, then like I said, it will run, but the sub timings are the ones that you'd need to sit there and get completely, completely anal about sorting out. But it was really easy to use, really good temperatures as well. Despite the fact this is a kind of like a combo um, block at the top and it is covered up, we didn't have any VRM issues whatsoever. Again, wasn't as cool as the Apex, but we're talking about four degrees difference. And the, the, the Apex was so open and big anyway. The fact that this was only that much further in front, yet it's covered and all that sort of stuff. So but they were still in the 60s. Some of the other boards, uh, overclocked, you're looking at 80 degrees plus. So they're, they're working wonders with their VRMs at the moment. So this did very, very well. 
The cover, like the OLED screen and stuff, that's all nice, but we're kind of going into a conclusion now anyway. But it ticks all the boxes. You've obviously got the options with the, um, the um, water blocks at the top if you, if you want to use it. But anyway, it's, it's a lovely board, and I would say for the package that you get, it's probably the, the kind of, I think it's the sweet spot. And there did seem to be a lot of positive people literally wanting to know about the review. But at the end of the day, it's the Z370 chipset, which is basically the Z270 chipset with a, you know, a couple of bits bodged onto it to run the six cores. And the rest of it is just classic Maximus formula. It's basically the Maximus 9 formula with uh, an extra back plate on the back and you know some slightly different heat sinks designs. The rest of it looks, acts, and performs as good as you would expect, annoyingly. So it has done really well, and that's why we decided to give it the OC3D Enthusiast Award, because when you kind of nail all the water cooling and the back plate and all that kind of stuff in together with the nice lights, and it does just tick all the boxes. So if you were waiting for this review, which a lot of people have been saying, waiting for this review, to know whether you should buy it or not, I literally have nothing bad to report. And I looked hard for it as well. But anyway, this has been Tiny Tom Logan. Yes, I did get the review done quite quickly because like, as I said, it's a formula. It, you know, if I had something bad to say, you would have known about it because the video would have been an hour long because of all the explanation that I'd had to have done to make sure that Asus didn't go absolutely nuts about it. So the fact that we got it all done quick, quite quick just goes to show you that it was a cracker. Christmas cracker? Too early? Mm.